Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be testing the i5-4440 paired with a GTX 1063GB on many games. If you want to skip to those particular games, check the timestamps down in the description. This will be targeting 60 frames per second, as you can see in the title. Apart from this i5 and the 1060, I'm using 8 gigs of RAM on dual channel, 2 sticks of 4GB. All these games will be running on 1080p and I'll give you some advice along the way in order to improve the experience. So first of all, we'll be testing Battlefield 1 using almost most the maximum settings. I just lower lighting, effects, post process and mesh quality to high. So from ultra to high the rest is just maxed out. And well for those settings the GPU is enough. Usually it's very easy for the 1063 gigs to just get 60 frames per second with this game. But this time due to the CPU being maxed out and we are in a 64 player multiplayer match there's a ton of things going on at the same time. So since the CPU cannot keep up the GPU usage has to drop, so in this case we are below 70% GPU usage the big majority of the time. That means that the 1060 is not being fully utilized. In the worst case scenario I got a drop into the mid 20s, but then it was usually between 30 and 45 frames per second, and you'll notice very unstable frame times, which means that the game will feel a little inconsistent. The best way to make it more consistent is to cap it at 40 frames per second or 30 frames per second, so the CPU can easily manage what's going on. So yeah, that's my advice there, you need a better CPU for this game, at least on 64 player matches, and the single player runs just fine. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Versorg deine Wunden! Far Cry 5, I'll be using almost the maximum settings, I just lower shadows, geometry and vegetation from ultra to high, so one step below the maximum. The rest is just maxed, no problems whatsoever. And well, in this case, you'll notice that we are at 60 frames per second very often, but the CPU can be maxed out, especially when you're fighting many enemies at the same time. So the game can easily drop into the low 50s in certain parts, again, especially when there are many enemies on screen. The same that was happening in Battlefield 1, the CPU cannot keep up, so the GPU has to slow down. In this case, it's not a huge deal, like on Battlefield 1, that we get 30 frames per second in some places. Here it's just 50 frames per second like the worst case scenario it depends on where you are so frankly here i'll keep it the same way as you see on screen other than that the game felt very good to play and i'll talk to you again in the next game player knowns battlegrounds or pubg on this one i'll be using pretty much high settings i just lowered foliage to very low and textures to medium 
The textures on medium was because we have only 3 gigs of VRAM and it can be filled up very quickly using high textures. And then the foliage was on very low because it's easier to spot enemies that are very far away trying to hide on grass. So around 300 meters from your position, the grass stops being rendered, so it helps with the visibility of enemies. These are not the best settings for visibility, I'm just trying to get 60 frames per second, but I wanted to have a slight advantage, but I tried to be at least a little more realistic with the settings. Ah oh, well, I'm in the bootcamp area of the new map, which is where most players just go to fight each other, and so far it was over 60 frames per second pretty much all the time. There can be some random stutter every now and then, which is the reason why at the end of the footage I just lost there because of a sudden stutter when I was aiming. That is terrible if you're playing a competitive game, but it was something that I couldn't avoid. It happens on many systems I tested this, better CPUs, better GPUs, so it seems to be just a thing with optimization. This game needs more work, that's about it, but I'll talk to you again in the next game. Fortnite, the battle royale mode, and well, this one will be just maxed out, it's not a hard game to run. With the maximum settings, I was over 60 frames per second all the time. There can be some spikes in the frame time when you first jump from the bus. Other than that, it's completely stable, it feels very good to play, very responsive. So yeah, I have nothing to say about this one, it runs just fine. And I'll talk to you again in the next game.
GTA 5. I know this one I'll be using almost the maximum settings and I'm saying almost because the advanced graphics are not maxed out. Those options are just ridiculously demanding and don't make a huge difference in the visuals of the game. So I just kept everything on very high except in reflections which were on ultra. I also lowered grass from the highest to very high because it can be very demanding on the GPU. And well by using those settings I was over 60 frames per second pretty much all the time. There can be some drops below 60 in this footage. That's because I was doing a stress test, which is a lot of explosions on screen. So the AI is trying to flee, it's very crazy. A ton of fire, a ton of explosions, all that kind of stuff. And that pushes the CPU and GPU. Usually to fix those drops below 60, just lower shadows from very high to high. And that should fix it somewhat. Maybe you get a drop to 58. But in my opinion, that's not a big deal because this is a stress test. And I'll talk to you again in the next game. Assassin's Creed Origins. On this one I'll be using high settings pretty much and I'll be running around in Alexandria because that's one of the CPU heavy areas of the game. Then I'll just free some of the prisoners and start fighting some of the guards and you'll notice a ton of stutters. It's very easy to spot in the frame time graph and you might ask yourself why that inconsistency. That's because of the CPU. This game uses a ton of CPU, so yeah, the CPU can be easily maxed out, which means that the GPU usage will just drop. I recommend just capping the frame rate at 45 or 30. If you cap it at 30, there should be little to no stutter compared to unlock frame rates. On 45, yeah, it feels a lot better to play, but there are still some spikes in the frame time. So yeah, my recommendation here, just cap it at 30 frames per second or 45, and that way you avoid the frame time spikes or most of the frame time spikes. And due to that extra consistency, the game feels a lot better to play. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Wait a minute. Hey, what? If it moves, kill it! Enough! Time is up, imbecile! I'll get this in my range! Too close by Amun. Shot well in range. <laughs> 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 
Rainbow Six Siege. And on this one I'll be using high settings with shading and reflection quality on medium. I mean occlusion will be on SSPC. Lens effects and depth of field will be turned off because those usually avoid me to see the enemy in some cases. But if you want to be extra competitive, just turn off I mean occlusion. They'll make the game just look less dark, especially indoors. Well, this is just for benchmarking purposes. So while well, not much to say, the game is over 60 frames per second all the time. The frame times are very consistent. And if you want to push the CPU less, because it can sometimes just hit 100%, just cap it at 60 frames per second. That should make the CPU, like on Assassin's Creed Origins, do less work. But overall, the game was completely playable. I have nothing else to say about it. And I'll talk to you again in the next game. Incoming adrenaline boost. You have dropped the diffuser. has been recovered. Op 4 last stop standing. Bag! You must recover the diffuser. Uh -huh. Op 4 eliminated. Friendly mission successful. Forza Horizon 3. On this one I had to use a mix between medium and high settings, but unfortunately the texture quality had to be lowered to the minimum. That's because of the 3 gigs of VRAM. This game just uses a ton of VRAM and it can seriously affect the frame rate. You'll see that the VRAM usage is maxed out, even with 4 or more gigabytes of VRAM. The game will just max out the VRAM. I don't know why, but it just fills the VRAM usage. Usually this game suffers the most when there are many opponents on screen. That's why I'm just going into a race with 11 opponents. I'll be trying to be as close to them as possible. And there is when the CPU usage usually cranks up. You'll notice in one of the places in this footage that the game completely freezes for 5 seconds. I'm not sure why that happened, if it was the CPU, the VRAM or just the system RAM, but yeah, the game froze for an entire 5 seconds, then it just continued like nothing happened. This game wasn't a perfect PC port by any means, that's probably why, but I'll talk to you again in the next game. Just Cause 3. 
and on this one I'll be using the maximum settings except in textures which will be on high instead of the maximum again due to the 3 gigs of VRAM usually the game performs very well but what I will do in this video is blow up a couple gas stations because those are the biggest explosions in the game and that usually hits the GPU and CPU away from those moments with the big explosions just flying around or just attacking some enemies the frame rate can be over 70 frames per second very easily but unfortunately the frame times are not that consistent as you'll see in the graph below the frame rate it goes up and down very quickly which can make the game feel a little more inconsistent so in my opinion here the best way to maintain a more consistent frame rate is to cap it at 60 it will make the cpu work less the gpu work less so the game will feel better because the frame times will be more consistent but after like 30 or 40 minutes the game can go over 8 gigabytes of ram usage i guess it depends if you're flying around too much or doing a lot of explosions at the same time but when you start the game it will tell you you don't have enough system ram there will be some instability here and there, but you can still play the game. So I'll talk to you again in the next game. Rise of the Tomb Raider, I'll be using high settings and this will be a stress test once again because this is one of the most demanding areas in the whole game, it uses a lot of CPU, a lot of GPU, you'll notice that the CPU will be maxed out but we can still be over 50 frames per second the big majority of the time. After we get through the first part of the footage, the game starts to be significantly closer to 60 frames per second but yeah it depends what's on screen. The biggest deal in this case in my opinion is that the frame times are very inconsistent like on other games which will make the game feel less smooth so in this case i recommend a 60 frames per second cap or a 50 frames per second cap that will be the best way to make the game feel smoother oh yeah this is the worst case scenario in the other levels it should be significantly better so i'll talk to you again in the next game Lara, i'm sorry if sophia was less than welcoming I understand. I'm just glad you were there to vouch for me. My people have spent decades fighting outsiders. It's not an easy habit to break. See if you can lend a hand with the preparations. A little hard work would go a long way towards building trust. I'll see what I can do. They will likely come from the air. Jacob is assembling fighters in the upper village to draw their attention there. The children and those too old to fight will be safely hidden in the Acropolis category. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, I'll be using almost the maximum settings, accepting full edge visibility range and detail level. Those two options will be on high instead of ultra and on the post processing options, I just lowered the amino occlusion option from HBAO plus to SSAO in order to get a more consistent frame rate. And while the game was over 60 frames per second just fine, but since I'm going into a very CPU intensive part called Nobigrad, you'll see some spikes in the frame time, that's because of the CPU first of all, and because the game is loading assets at the same time. So once you go through the level a second time, usually those frame time spikes are less pronounced, which means that the game will feel significantly smoother. But overall it's just when moving around, usually while you're fighting or something like that, the game doesn't have those big stutters. So I don't consider this when I'm just moving around a big deal. I'll talk to you again in the next game. Got my eye 
Hitman, I'll be using a mix between medium and high settings. Textures will be on medium due to the 3 gigs of VRAM. Shadow resolution will be on medium as well. And the testing will be done on Marrakesh, which is the level that has the highest number of NPCs. So there is a ton going on in this level. And due to that, we're usually into the mid 40s. We're not hitting 60 frames per second. And the GPU usage is below 70%. Also, the frame times are very inconsistent, especially when you're fighting with guards. In that case, the frame rate drops, the frame time spikes are worse, and the GPU usage is even lower. So my recommendation here, unfortunately, is to cap it at 30 frames per second. That'll make the frame times way more consistent, and you can crank up some extra settings because the GPU usage will be very low, and that's pretty much what I recommend. I'll talk to you again in the next game. <laughs> Counter-Strike Global Offensive or CSGO. Since a ton of people ask me to use low settings to see how many frames per second we can get, I used almost the lowest settings. The only things that I didn't put on the lowest were the texture detail and the multi-core rendering. And while this game is over 120 frames per second all the time, it can drop below 120 in replays or just spectating or something like that. While playing the game, it feels very smooth, so I'll talk to you again in the next game. Fallout 4, I'll be using almost the maximum settings once again. Shadow distance will be on high, God race quality will be on low since it doesn't have a huge visual difference and we have a better frame rate overall. And the testing will be done on Diamond City, so I'll be using a lift to go down so I can see the whole city at once. Then I'll just go around the city a little bit and start fighting with some guards. That'll make the frame rate drop into the mid 40s and that'll be the worst of the worst that I could get. Usually the mid 40s wasn't so bad, the frame times were very consistent, so the game felt just fine completely playable and I'll talk to you again in the next game. Who needs a haircut? Everyone needs a haircut. Step up. Move along. Don't let down the home team. Buy a swatter. We buy and sell everything to everyone except since. No sense allowed Intense. here. Intense. Hoop out. Skin pads. Nothing to see here. Finally, Batman Arkham Knight. On this one, I'll be using normal textures and normal shadows. That's because I'm trying to not go over 3 gigs of VRAM usage. This game can easily go over 3 gigabytes. And well, so far we were over 60 frames per second. But there were a ton of stutters, especially while moving around, fighting in the street or a very close environment. It's usually just fine, but once I get into the Batmobile, start destroying stuff around me, or just moving very fast, that can easily make a ton of frame time spikes which means a ton of stutter here and there, which means stuttering. This game had a lot of problems since day one. They didn't fix it 100%, unfortunately, but it's a lot better than day one, that's for sure. The way to make it more consistent is to get more RAM, first of all, a faster CPU and a faster hard drive. So if you install this on an SSD, it should be a little better. It won't be perfect. So yeah, guys, conclusion time. Yeah, the i5-4440, despite its age, you can still run all of these games. But on very CPU-intensive games, you notice that the frame times were inconsistent consistent, although we cannot max out the GPU, especially on Assassin's Creed Origins, Just Cause 3, Hitman, all the kind of stuff. Usually those CPU intensive games 
had a lot of trouble to run consistently. In this case, I don't really mind it too much. What you can do to fix those problems, the inconsistency, is just to cap the frame rate at something lower than 60, 45 or 30, for example. That's usually the best way to make the CPU do less work, which will mean more consistent frame times, so the game will feel better to play. So I would consider this CPU if you can find it very cheap on the used market, or if you have a CPU from the same generation that is a lot slower. Since we can buy an i3-8100, for example, and it can be a lot more consistent on all these games, has a better upgrade path, and it's not that expensive. So yeah, if you can get this one very cheap on the used market, go for it. It has cheaper RAM, DDR3, a cheaper motherboard, because those are very old right now. But if you already own an i5-4440 or similar, and you have something like a 750 Ti, I would say it's a good idea to get a better GPU first, so you'll notice a huge difference in the games. As I said, a 750 Ti to a 1060, but again, the frame rate won't be perfect in CPU intensive games as you could see on Assassin's Creed Origins and well once you do that you can upgrade the CPU later and they'll do the job just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and see you next time. Good riddance, too. This town's got enough guys in charge.